Gendun Rinpoche was born in 1918 in eastern Tibet in the district of Nanchen of the province of Kham. His father was a sculptor of mantras. Rinpoche himself usually said, I don't have a life story. I've drunk tea and eaten sampa. And yet he once told us his story. I was 15 or 16 years old when the 16th Gyalwa Karmapa visited our monastery. At the time, he was still a small child, and the previous Situ Rinpoche accompanied him. Karmapa stayed three days in our monastery and gave a crown ceremony with the small black hat, since he couldn't yet wear the large one. He also gave us a Chen Rezi empowerment. Sometime after his visit, I started the three-year retreat, and after that, I went on a one-year pilgrimage throughout Tibet, which led me to Tsurpu, the main seat of the Karmapas. Once again, I met the Karmapa and took part in another crown ceremony. From there, I traveled back home to Kham in eastern Tibet and spent about eight years in solitary retreat. Then the Karmapa visited Nangchen again. A large tent was set up and many people came to see him. Our whole community was there, except for our cooks. Two of my retreat friends traveled with me, and after our meeting with the Karmapa, we spent several years in the mountains, meditating in complete solitude. There we heard that the Chinese were invading Tibet, and that Karmapa was already staying in Patsen Jowori on his way to India. We decided immediately to risk fleeing, but on the way we came across the Chinese. I requested help and protection from the Three Jewels, asked them to lead me, because I was determined to escape. Other Tibetans tried to dissuade me, as they were convinced that the Chinese would kill me along with the others. But I was sure that fleeing was the best thing to do, and that the Three Jewels would protect us. Our escape route wasn't a real path. On one side were very steep cliffs, and on the other the Brahmaputra. The Chinese had the entire route under their control. In order not to be seen, we waited until the dead of night had fallen. The Chinese had flashlights, and we came so close to them that we could see the glow of their cigarettes, their steaming teacups, and their guns pointing in our direction. Although our bodies were shaking with fear, we simply prayed to the Three Jewels and went on. It took two hours to get through the Chinese lines, and it was certainly due to the blessing of the refuge that they didn't catch us. We were as if invisible. The Tibetans that accompanied me were overwhelmed and very thankful. They thought it was a miracle. Once in India, I heard that the Karmapa was already in Ramtek, Sikkim, and together with a friend, I went as quickly as possible to see him. Karmapa wanted to see us immediately, and he blessed us with both hands. One of his servants wanted to send us away, but the Karmapa invited us to stay in Ramtek. He said that his monks would take care of everything we needed. In case of any difficulties, the Karmapa would personally look after us. We could hardly believe what was happening. We were, of course, very happy to be with him, but we didn't want to stay in the monastery, since it is said that if one spends too much time very close to one's lama, there's danger of damaging one's samayas. That had never happened to us, and we didn't want such a thing to happen. For quite a few years, I don't recall how long, I lived, according to the wishes of Karmapa, with one of his patrons in Kalimpong. He took care of me so well that I could dedicate my entire time to Dharma practice without having to do any other work.
Kamapa then sent me to Bhutan, where the king's mother had just entrusted a temple to him. Two of us were sent together, and it so happened that I could practice in a retreat place in the vicinity of the king's palace without any other responsibilities, since my friend took care of the necessary rituals in the temple. One day Dilgo Kiense Rinpoche told me that I would be going to Europe and that he could help me get a passport. Though I told him I would never go to Europe, Kiense Rinpoche asked me whether I was sure of this, and I said, definitely sure, and that is my final decision. He just replied, you don't want to go to Europe, but you will be going anyway. Shortly after that, the Kamapa came to Bhutan and invited me for breakfast the next day. He told me that he would be traveling to the West that same year, visiting many countries. He wanted to find out whether there would be an openness for the Buddhist teachings in the West. He said, if the general conditions are there, then you will have to go. You shouldn't protest and insist that you would prefer to stay here. I told the Bhutanese minister for internal affairs that you would need a passport, and he has already begun to take the necessary steps. If I get the impression that the Dharma could flourish in the West, I will then know whether America or France are more suitable. The decision is made and you shouldn't resist.